especially reading some stuff last night on Bill Gates, he thinks two things are going to happen with small business. Uh, one, he thinks there are going to be a lot more small businesses because technology uh, and more of a service oriented orientation in business is going to lower the barriers to entry. So there'll just be more small businesses and that uh, the small businesses will become smaller because they won't need the same economies of scale as access to information and um, you know, the finance, you can get your money faster, things like what UPS is doing is the capital requirements to be in business won't be as high, so there'll be more businesses and they'll be small. And I don't think it necessarily means they'll be less profitable either. I, mean, I thought that was interesting as, as he's looking at as he's looking at the future and what he's looking at. So yeah.
WCMA, accounts like these, and all of a sudden the deposits vaporized. You know, that's 60% of financial assets now, less than a third with banks. It essentially chopped our legs out from under, so we were left with all these lost leader loans and not the deposits to subsidize it. And that's a big challenge externally, is to make each product good enough and profitable enough on its own that you're not at risk on each product. So again, because of these pressures, there are just there are large skews in the returns. We're we risk-based price at Wells Fargo, and, and I can't say I love to make this commercial and say we're absolutely perfect. I think we're better, much better than average, but it's a challenge for the industry because you, you all the clients as you're helping them place their capital each year, you know, their requests, uh, if they're renewing, there's always a pricing discussion. And you know, we consistently overcharge the lower risk customers and undercharge the highest risk customers. And you end up with this you know, averaging of price, and it's a challenge. But what this has done is it's enabled the specialized lenders to come in and just beat the crap out of us. You know, factors. You think factor, people think factoring is so much more expensive, but in reality, for the right customer, it helps them eliminate so many internal processes that net of it all, it ends up being less expensive. We don't price right, or we don't have uh, the product set up in such a way that we're competitive uh, head to head. Took to the next slide. Yeah. So just to illustrate this, I'm sorry if this is a little tough to read. I'll just talk talk around it. Um, banks have grown from 1980 to 1995. Uh, over that 15 year period, banks grew at a compound annual growth rate of 4.1 percent. During that same period of time, non-bank finance companies grew at 9.9 percent, doubled the growth rate of banks. Okay. I think everyone knows this intuitively, but when we look at that, you, know, you see the erosion of profits and, and the shrinking of an industry, and banking as we do it is basically dead. So again, this greater customer sophistication what we're talking about is perfect information. And you're looking at, when I'm talking about perfect information, it's, it's this idea that someone can go on the internet today and shop every single lender there is for the lowest rate. Uh, they can shop for the best cash management account that's out there. And I, and I don't know a specific parallel to the, to the CPA community, but what I can say is that that puts you in a very unique position, as you already are in, to be, to be that front end, that agent, which you already are, as the information becomes easier and easier to get at. Um, customers are less and less dependent upon going to specific institutions to just stay there. And new competition, new competitors, and these are the technology companies targeting the value-added activities, payables and receivables management, everything around cash management. Um, I had a graphic for this that showed the actual profits in play, everything around cash management, is about triple the actual profits available in cash management. So what's going on around cash management um, tends to be much more disparate. <coughs> These two strategic attributes of the new competitors are organized around products or very narrow competencies. And they have this relentless focus on product innovation. You know, you don't, one of the things you don't see necessarily out of traditional financial institutions are new products designed to meet companies where they are in their particular life cycle with that really take into account changes in the industry. And we're seeing this. So again, product first. This is this issue of a category killer, um, when we introduced our business line product, this was a in the mail uh, line of credit, now it's up to $100,000. At the time, um, we grew that business very rapidly, I mean, in the billions of dollars in terms of commitment. It was considered a category killer. We were the largest lender in states that we didn't actually have any distribution. And we're now a very large lender in Canada without any branch distribution. That's an example of a category killer type product when you can enter a market and pick off a product without full service distribution. Um, what, what's scary about this now is that uh, people have piggybacked that and our average pricing because the risk is about prime plus six. Um, this is basically a souped up credit card. Um, you know, we're seeing competitors coming out now direct mailing credit cards at prime plus one, prime plus a half. And, yeah, it's, it's mind-boggling because the, the margin of safety is beginning to disappear in the market today. We've, we've all probably heard the, uh, the term bad ones are making good times and kind of where we're at right now, I think. Uh, and what was interesting in all the research that you look at in terms of the changes that are going on, uh, we always assume people are moving because of price. 
right? 